Welcome, in this video, I'm gonna show you six of the most common chord progressions on the guitar. This is the second video of a four-part series all about the most common chord progressions. There's a link to a playlist of the full series in the description. This second lesson of the series is about three chord chord progressions. The first lesson in the series was on two chord chord progressions. I'm gonna play around with each chord progression in a couple keys so you can hear it. I'll talk about what songs use those progressions in various keys and how I recommend you working on these as well. If you wanna follow along and be able to play these same chord progressions in various keys and really understand them, grab my free chord chart. There's a link in the description. It's called Chords with Color. It includes all the theory information you need through five different keys. It's a great way to work on chord progressions and understand them. So then when we work on songs, we know the theory behind it and we can learn them faster, remember them longer, stuff like that. So in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you these chord progressions with the Roman numeral theory numbers. And that way we can really understand them and their relationships with each other so we can apply them anywhere on the guitar, in any key, and to any song. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a lot about music theory on the guitar, mapping out the fretboard, stuff like that. Make sure you're subscribed if you're into that sort of thing. Let's dive into these awesome three chord chord progressions. The first common three chord chord progression that we're gonna do today is one, four, five, four. You might think of this as the Louis Louis progression or the wild thing progression. So this is a great one to work on. One, four, five, four. And if you do it in that rhythm, So that's the Louie Louie song. And again, instead of just learning a song that way, really think of, okay, this is one, this is four, this is five. And then um, you'll start to hear and find all kinds of other songs. You start changing the rhythm a little bit, um, change the key, you'll kind of realize it's not just that song, it's just that progression. And it can be applied to thousands, millions of songs. So if you recognize a progression and a song that it, it's used in, put it in the comments for sure so we can start to have a collection of those things. So. Um, if I do that in a couple keys, you know, if you do it in C, uh, in G. One, four, five, four, one, four, five, four, one. Tons of songs will be using that. So depending on the rhythm you so now it doesn't sound like Louie Louie anymore, right? Um, and then start to manipulate these chord progressions by adding um, extensions and stuff like that. And one of my later videos is gonna be talking more about that. And uh, the chord chart that I talked about earlier has options for that. But if I played one, and then four, and then five, kind of with different variations of those chords. Um, again, tons of songs use this. So if you recognize one, put it in the comments. Let's go to the next chord progression. The next three chord chord progression is just the simple 12 bar blues. Let's do this in B flat because it's so commonly done in B flat and then we'll do it in a, well, let's do it in E actually. Okay, so this chord progression is so classic. We've all heard it a million times. Just uses three chords and it's the 12 bar blues. So the first four bars is just the one chord. And then you're gonna go to, the four chord for two bars, back to the one chord for two bars, and then the turnaround, which is five for one bar, four for one bar, one, back to one. You can stay there for two bars or go back to five for another one. So you'll hear it like this. I'll do it a little fast just so we get through it. One, two, three, two, the four chord, back to the five, uh, back to one, and then five, and then four, and then one, and then back to five at the end if you want to. So that's the 12 bar blues. Let's do it in another key. Let's do it in A. I'll do it a little slower too, so. And I'm gonna go to the four, it's D. Getting a little different feel, kind of a shuffle feel this time. Now five, four, one. I like to throw that five chord at the end. I threw, made it a kind of a crunchy dominant seventh chord. There. All right, our next three chord chord progression is two, five, one. This is thought of as kind of the staple of jazz harmony, um, but it's actually used in um, popular music as well, especially um, earlier popular, popular music, not as much um, nowadays, but 
popular music, and really that's where jazz came from when that was the pop music of the time, when um, show tunes were being used to improvise over. But all of that harmony came from classical music. So Bach is using two five ones all the time. Um, any classical composer of Romantic era, era and earlier, certainly using it all the time. Um, so that's let's go ahead and do that in a few keys. Um, we're gonna add sevens to this. We don't have to though. Let's do C major, so D minor. Um, do D minor seven, and then G seven, and then C major. So you could just that's jumping to other voicings. That's still C major seven. So D minor, G major. Okay, so that's happening in songs all the time. When you play triads like that, it really sounds more like a pop song, and you'll hear that in a lot of pop songs. Um, when it has the sevens, then it sounds like jazz. So like jazz tunes that use this, Autumn Leaves. Da, 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 da. Ba, ba, ba. There's our two, five, one right there. The first three chords of Autumn Leaves. Um, so many other songs, Fly Me to the Moon um, has it in there. Now these progressions are um, just kind of embedded in other progressions sometimes, and sometimes they are by themselves. And Fly Me to the Moon has six, and then two, and then five, and then one. So the two, five, one is in there. And then the song Yesterday by the Beatles uses the two, five, one, starts on G, then goes to F sharp minor triad, goes to B7, that's two, five, and then lands on uh, e minor, so it's kind of partially a minor two five one, but still two five one. So this is good to just get used to in all kinds of keys. Let's go ahead and just do it in E. What's the two chord of E? What's the five chord of E? What's the one chord of E? So I recommend doing this through all kinds of various keys, and if you don't know what keys to do it in, just do it through C, A, G, E, and D, because those are the keys that have most the most uh, open string chords in it. So it's just great to be able to find those in any key and see those relationships. The next three chord chord progression is minor one, minor four, and then five dominant seven. Um, this is a very, very cool chord progression. If we just do it kind of in outside of the context of a song, Sometimes you'll hear it in this case kind of balances back to the one and then um, has the one at the end of the progression and the beginning. So that's one way to do it. Another way is to stay on this one for a long time and then go to four. So it probably sounds really familiar. I'm doing an A minor right now. A minor is the one chord, D minor is the four, and then E7 as the five. So even though with those two kind of slight variations of the timing of the chords, it's just fun to think of how useful these chord progressions are. In the 30s, Django Reinhardt used this um, on his tune Minor Swing. Um, that was a Django Reinhardt tune kind of playing. And then Billie Eilish's huge hit song, uh, Tough Guy, uses that same chord progression. I don't know what key that's in, but that's the version that stays on the one a little longer. Then goes to the four. If you're familiar with that song, you're probably hearing it in there once I mentioned it. So, uh, wow, all the way from uh, almost 100 years ago to now, same chord progression. Uh, again, with a little bit of timing difference and those kinds of variations are what makes make, make the possibilities endless. So that's what's exciting as a songwriter or as a creative person or doing your own versions of songs. There's so many ways to make it unique. That's not just like, if it's that one chord progression, it's always the same. So many ways to make it unique adding extensions, changing the timing a little bit, the rhythm, the time signature, adding connecting notes, stuff like that. The next three chord chord progression is one minor, minor one, flat seven major, flat six major, back to flat seven major. This is like the all along the watchtower progression. Minor one, flat seven major, flat six major. These are just diatonic chords in a minor key. If you wanna know about the theory of that and how that works, check out my um, Chords Through the Minor Scale lesson. I'll put a link to that in the description. That's part of my chord theory series that I did um, a bit ago. That is super cool. Check out the whole series. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But we got the, the minor one. These are just, this is just basically the one chord, seven chord, six chord of the minor 
key of the minor scale, um, I always say very specifically one minor, uh, flat seven major, because you can interchange them around in keys, I, I like to be very specific, but um, that's a great progression. And then the way to play with these, as I've been saying, is to just think through different keys and get control over these and get the sound in your ear. So if it was an E minor, what's the flat seven major chord of E minor? It's D, what's the flat six major chord of E minor? It's C. So now it gets very different sound than where we just were. Notice sometimes I'll play it up here, I'll play something with these really movable non-open string chords. And that's a nice way to think, you know, thinking kind of along one string. It's a nice way to get used to the theory and the structure. It's harder with the open strings to think of really how these things are connected. Because here we can think, well, that's the one chord, whole step down is the flat seven major chord and, and that's a major shape. Whole step down is the flat six chord, that's a major shape. Over here, same chords, but you don't see those connections with the crossing strings as much. So practice it in all these kinds of ways. The next three chord chord progression is two, four, one. This is interesting. This is less kind of a part of older traditional functional harmony. It's much more in kind of popular songwriting, indie songwriting, kind of modern music today. Um, if we take a two chord, um, and so let's just go ahead and say we're in G, and I go to A minor is the two, C is the four, and then one. It, it's much more kind of songwrity. Um, it's it's a ton. It's used a ton in like songs that are hit songs on the radio, um, Beatles songs, stuff like that. Less so in like standard jazz tunes, old show tunes, stuff like that. Um, so. It's a, it's a great one to start practicing. So we're gonna talk in a couple videos about how to, how to use all of these common chord progressions and, and uh, play with variations of them to make the options just seem endless. But uh, let's just talk about one right now. I say that because this uh, example from Nowhere Man by the Beatles uses a slight variation on it where... Um, So that section there, that spot there is two, four, one, but the four is minor. So that's a little uh, kind of permission right away to say, what if we just change qualities of chords anytime with any of these? We'll talk about that more in another video in this series. So two, four minor, one, it's a great example. If you're totally lost as to how to work on these, because I'm just putting out these numbers and I'm just kind of playing all over the guitar in different keys. I mean, the point is to get that understanding of, of keys of chord relationships of the theory of this stuff. So definitely grab my chord chart um, with the link in the description to start playing with that. And then go over this list and you can just look in the description. There's links to each, um, there's a list with links to each spot in the video for each chord progression that I'm talking about. So you can just look at that and say, oh, here are those common chord progressions. Um, like this one where we're saying two, four, one. Okay, well, let me try this in whatever key. What if I go to the key of D? Okay, D is one. Uh, the two chord is gonna be E minor. Okay, the four chord is G. And so that chord chart just gives you those numbers and the shapes to play with. So you can start manipulating it around in that way if you want to. Um, if not, if you understand that theory stuff and it's just cool to hear the list of uh, the common chord progressions, that's great. Also, stick around for next week. I got another video coming out with the third lesson in this series. And in that one, we're going to do four chord chord progressions and beyond. So we're gonna do several, several more chord progressions that have more than three chords, and that's gonna be a fun one. So I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.